Hello everyone, it's Miss Redmond here. Welcome to the sixth and final lesson in the chemical reactions topic. This time we're talking about exothermic and endothermic reactions. If you don't have on one already, please go and grab a pen and a piece of paper so you can make notes and do any little tasks as we go through. Uh, here is your learning journey. Feel free to pause the video and write that information down. So an exothermic reaction gives out heat energy so exo is like an exit when you walk through the exit you're going out so you're giving out thermal which is heat energy so exothermic gives out heat energy and endothermic reaction takes in heat energy here are some examples of exothermic reactions pretty dramatic ones these are examples of endothermic reactions. So sherbet, if you're very, very observant, when you put it in your mouth, you might be able to notice that your mouth is getting a bit cold. And then the disposable ice packs are endothermic reactions. That's why they get cold. And photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction. That's why it requires energy from the sun. So this is a link to the uh, plants to biology <laughs> so have a look at this reaction a has a temperature increase of 50 degrees c and reaction b has a temperature decrease of 20 degrees c so which one do you think is exothermic and which one do you think is endothermic you can write it down you can just do this in your head so the answers are a is exothermic and B is endothermic because A is giving out heat and B is taking in heat. Here's another way to look at it. Uh, endothermic reactions, heat is going in. Exothermic reactions, heat is going out. Here's another way. Exothermic, heat is going out, heat's being released. Exothermic, heat is going in. This is an interesting way of thinking about it. So an endothermic reaction is like pushing something up a hill. So the, the object is moving, but you're having to put energy in all the time. Whereas in an exothermic reaction, you give that object a little shove and it moves down on its own. So that's the difference. Endothermic, you're putting energy in and exothermic energy is coming out. All right, have a look at the following slides and decide whether they're exothermic or endothermic. Feel free to shout at your computer screen or your phone or whatever, or just do it on your head, or you could even do it on paper if you want to. All right, so sherbet, is that exothermic or endothermic? I'm going to tell you the answer in a second. So that is endothermic. <clears throat> Burning wood, exothermic or endothermic? Of course, that's exothermic, you're giving out heat. Burning magnesium ribbon, to do it, you have to light a Bunsen burner. So that's, does that make it exothermic or endothermic? So that one might have tripped you out, but it's exothermic because heat energy is being given out once you've given it that chemical push with the Bunsen burner. Frying an egg, exothermic or endothermic? That is endothermic because you have to keep supplying that heat energy. This diagram, is that showing you an exothermic or an endothermic reaction? So we're giving out heat, so that makes it exothermic. Photosynthesis, mentioned this at the start of the video, exo or endothermic? That's endothermic because energy is being supplied by the sun or by sunlight. Is this diagram showing you an exo or an endothermic reaction? So we've got heat energy going in, that is endothermic. Respiration. So respiration is the reaction which all animals and plants do to get energy out of their food. You could think of it as the opposite of photosynthesis. So that should give the game away. 
that is exothermic because you are releasing that energy. And here's your summary slide. Exothermic change is one that gives out heat energy and endothermic change is one that takes in heat energy. That is the end of the chemical reactions topic. Thank you very much for listening.